Well, good afternoon. It's week five. Today it is 95 degrees, so it's steamy just like we like it here in the low desert of central Arizona. Um, I'm really playing with the thought of uh, if I'm going to turn the air conditioner on tonight, but it's only supposed to be today and tomorrow, and then we're going to drop back down into the 70s. So for the sake of saving, I might push through these two steamy nights to get back to the 70s before I turn on my air conditioning. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about um, what's going on in the garden. So we're going to do a little tour and of course as we're starting to get warmer we're starting to encounter some troubles if you will in the garden and that's great I feel like um, for both of us you and I um, because it gives us a chance to learn with each other and um, come up with solutions um, to the different things that are going on with our plants. So we're going to start over here at bed one and make our way that way as you can see I we had all the nesterium going this way last week and I noticed that it had aphids on it which I'm completely okay with because I'd rather that aphids be attracted over here to the calendula and to the uh, nesteriums than I do wanting them to go over into my bed so this is another reason um, why we plant plants like this is because they you know can also distract um, the things that we don't want on our plants. So we've still got a lot of nice growth here with the calendula. Over here, I underestimated how the nasturiums are going to take over. So they're kind of um, repressing some of the calendula that we have planted over there. But I think um, this nasturium is probably going to die back here soon. And the <laughs> the borage I'll show you over there in a second how many aphids are going crazy on it but it's getting so heavy that it's not even wanting to stay up uh, but that's where the flowers are right now and over here we've got um, a lot of green leaf lettuces coming up obviously we over planted the heck out of it um, but we'll let it go for a little bit and start taking some cuttings and I thinned out our radishes here that are in the D A l e shape um so we're excited to see those come along and we are kind of adjusting our water and paying close attention to what's going on with the tomatilla i don't have any solutions yet after this video i'm going to trim all this back because i'm going to show you in the other bucket that um the other spinach has bolted and it's going to seed so we're going to have this tonight with some spaghetti so that it doesn't just go to bolt also and back here I forgot to share that we also have um, a cantaloupe coming up and I don't I don't know what this is unless I planted my okra in the wrong place because I don't remember planting more than two cantaloupe so maybe that is an okra but that'll be okay because these two will be at different stages in their life together and I still don't have any beans coming up but you see I've got more green leaf lettuce over there and all the herbs and flowers over here are just continuing to stay nice looking and i'm gonna cut all this kale down this week too um, especially the bigger leaves and get them frozen so that we keep those and i planted the other okra in here and i don't believe for a second that that is okra um, but so we're looking for that to come in there and this watermelon plant is doing lovely and just real quick again see the base of that borage how thick it is and see all these little white things these are evidence of aphids and like i said it's uh it's keeping it away from the bed so we're okay with that but look at those amazing red nasturium down there so lovely now bed one in my opinion is doing pretty well there's besides the tomatilla which is a new thing for me so i'm not as freaked out about it as i am the problems that we're about to come along to and i don't mean freaked out as a relative term so i mean my concern doesn't lie as much with the tomatillas as it does with the situation that i've got going on with my squash so starting here in bed two you can see over there that this plant 
and all the squashes are doing this. They're beginning to have this yellowing occur, some crispiness going on, on the leaves, and even some of the radishes over here, um, their leaves are changing and they're not looking as happy as they did. Now they are true leaves, so I'm gonna be, I mean, these are first set leaves, the yellow, the ones that are turning yellow. So maybe as the next set of leaves come in, things will get better and better for the radishes, but I'm seeing something go on here. And I think it's, you know, I, I think it's a nutrient thing because see again, here's an example of one of these now this is a squash, an early straight neck. And see the yellowing, the dots in there. Now this right here, if you remember, is the Brussels sprout that I cut down to the base and it's growing like that. So I'm just seeing what happens. But again, there's another squash that's got that yellowing going on. This right here, this experiment in life, it looks like it's really dry but it's not. See how it doesn't want to break yet? So we're still just playing with this. And the crazy cauliflower with <laughs> the purplish looking buds there is so interesting to watch. The parsley looking cilantro stuff has clearly gone to bolt over here and we've still got plenty of play coming out with our calendula. And yesterday I came through and took a lot of cuttings of calendula and that's gonna encourage more growth to come up there. Now see, here's that spinach that I was talking about. And if you remember from last week's video, this wasn't here and now it's all the way up to my elbow and this one's starting to shoot up tonight. So we're gonna get all this spinach too to go with our spaghetti. And over here in the little bed by the girls, um, sandbox area all the cosmos are coming up really nicely nobody's leaning over and look at how nicely that um, mammoth sunflowers coming in there and these are open bottom and um, a lot of over time obviously sand's gotten kicked over from the sand pit and sunflowers kind of like that the a loamy type of soil so these are open to the bottom so they'll end up being able to go all the way to the ground and so that means that these have got the you know the chance to be a good six seven foot tall so it's gonna be fun to see that and over here again this one's you know up above the block line there and i believe for sure that this is all calendula and it looks like something's munching on it um and it'll be fun to see the cosmos coming in i am just you know i went from worry to just super thrilled um this is one of my cherokee purples and it is really um, the best thing that I've got going on here. It's grown so much. This Ace 55, since I cut down its pear last week, it has just sprung right up. And this red cherry, this red cherry is probably the smallest of anybody. But here again is another uh, Cherokee purple. And see these? These are indicative of maybe some aphid action too. So I'm going to probably come along here tonight and give those a good spray off because that's the best thing to do. So all of the tomatoes besides these little visitors are looking quite well and I'm happy to see them just blow up with growth. All right, the watermelons are still looking nice. And trying to figure out what's been going on with the yellowing of the squash. The first thing I always think about when I see yellowing is water. Either too much water or too little water. And so that's the first thing that I started looking at over the course of last week. And we may have, you know, uh, prematurely jump back into our summer watering schedule because for the winter we were only watering um one time a week on sundays but in the summer we water two times a week and so maybe we jumped into that too fast so we skipped watering on wednesday um and that's not without testing i mean all the tomatoes and even the tomatoes today and those buckets there of squashes, all of them continue to have good moisture reading levels um, coming into even yesterday without having been watered since last week. And I know that tomatoes like to, you know, get a deep soak, dry out a little bit. So we're kind of being mindful and making um, some adjustments to watering, um, but also paying attention. So 
but also at the same time i'm after watching a video i think it's um gary pluark if i might be saying that wrong a video i watched about him having some yelling on squashes looks really similar to what i've got and he diagnosed it as a magnesium issue the way that we're going to solve this magnesium issue is with epsom salt and gary recommended um two tablespoons of epsom salt to one gallon of water and my watering can is actually two gallons so i'm gonna double that recipe obviously and then we're gonna come along and do a full a foliar feeding if you will on the leaves um I, like I said, first I look at water and then next I, we have to look at what could be going on as far as nutrients. And uh, I'm definitely going to, you know, layer these out with some more compost to get some more of that um, nutrition going to it and some azomite. But the first thing I'm going to do is, like I said, start with the uh, Epsom salt. So that's what's going on over here. Everybody's pretty well happy. And, you know, this one was looking great. All the new growth looks great. It's just like the older growth that starts to get yellowed and mottled like this. Look at this dango collard green. It, you remember it was this tall. And now the bolt has taken it all the way up there. Just beautiful dramatics going on with those mustard greens over there. So it's going to be fun to see if we can get some good cuttings from that enough to make a meal before there's any bolt action going on there and um same thing going on with these two squash here and here's the other collard green and it's um you know made some pretty flowers itself because we skipped watering on wednesday even though it was favorable for some of our plants it wasn't as favorable for some of our more sensitive plants for example lettuces and herbs and that beautiful celery plant that we've had all this time and our strawberry plant suffered a little bit and um, we were so busy this weekend with a community yard sale that we just we missed out if we would have been out here looking on saturday we would have seen that we had some watering issues going on. So that's what's going on with the celery. It just looks so sad and so does the strawberry. Um, but I had to duck out of the sun a little bit so you could see me um, because all the light has changed. And you know, this is uh, getting to be a hot space in the yard. So we're gonna check out those two and then I'm gonna show you some cool things over here in the bed. <laughs> see, here's this sad, sad celery. And, um, and you know, it's still, isn't going to last that long so i need to go ahead and get some better cuttings off of it um, because see this is another flower that's wanting to come up on the side even though i cut the one out of the very center core and like you can see it's got you know just took a beating this weekend this um this one is doing a little bit better than the others over there um but it's getting a little bit going on there and the, the strawberry looks good from up here but down there you can see that the strawberries just look really super sad and i did go along and stick some more cilantro in several little buckets there my cilantro is a slow bolting cilantro and i read on somebody's blog that they just kind of keep sticking it in different containers throughout the year and they'll get a couple of cuttings off of it before it bolts and they just go on with life but it kind of keeps them in a semi-consistent supply of cilantro so that's what i'm trying and if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out but now the two three things I want to show you over here in my little seed bed okay cilantro you know comes from the coriander seed so now that the flowers so these are the flowers that are still up here but all these flowers are gone so now what we have are the seeds that are developing but if you've ever cooked with coriander you know that these are brown so this is nowhere near ready for us to be collecting seeds. All the entire plant is gonna have to go pretty much to its demise before that time is ready, but it's very, very cool to see those coriander seeds, which is what gives us the cilantro plant begin to form. Now, over here, and look, this is a bunch of aphids that have showed up over here. 
can you see them i'm gonna have to come spray these off but i'm gonna probably collect this right here before i do so you remember these were a flower and all the flowers have gone and that and dale mentioned this yesterday he said it looked like there were dandelions over there but if you can get in there see that black in there the fuzzball that black are the seeds and so i i'm gonna double check tonight but i'm pretty sure that these are ready to harvest um i'm gonna double check that i don't need to let the whole plant die out but those seeds look pretty well ready to go and I don't want to lose them to these aphids that are coming, but I am going to spray off all these little aphids. And lastly, here's this beautiful little dill bouquet just making its way right on through. And the garlic has got just about, I don't know, I guess two or three weeks before it'll be ready to harvest. And something that you're looking for in there is these drying edges right here so maybe in a week or two i might go in there and see what one of them looks like but i believe based on dates alone we should be pulling these up in may well i am clearly just glistening and glowing <laughs> um but i'm trying to find the best time for us to be doing these tours and i don't want it to be where the light is always so bright that i'm squinting and and you're also not getting to see like the true color of the foliage and the plants and such so but this is a hot time of the day because here in arizona the time the temperatures don't go up and peak at noon and come back down and cool off towards the evening we climb all the way up until about five or six o'clock in the evening and then it slowly backs down so we're at 95 right now and i can't complain because oh lord i've been waiting for this sunshine so well i hope y'all have the best day ever and i'm so excited to see if our experiment with the epsom salt and water is gonna give some new life to our squash plants so